How's it going everyone, it's the final render here, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 camp building video. We've got a special video for you guys today, it's a real corker, for we are carrying on our tiny camp challenges. This is camp challenge number two, we did one of these about a week and a half ago and you guys really enjoyed it, and we've got lots more to come. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more crazy camp builds, because with these tiny camp build challenges, we have got to pull every glitch and every technique we know in order to make it work. So you'll be learning lots about camp building in these videos and overall they're just really fun and different as well. Very cool to show off to your friends. So sit back, relax, grab a Nuka Cola, grab some Yeetabix and let's get ready to build. So for our last camp building challenge, we did something very cool. We built a tiny camp inside one of these new train carts that we got. It was fantastic, we had everything we needed for a camp inside a tiny area with loads of cool decoration and it looked beautiful. It's one of my favorite camps we've ever done. But today, we are going on the water because we're gonna be building on a tiny little fishing boat that you can find in the forest region of Fallout 76. It's just to the south of Hillfolk Hot Dogs and to the north of Sylvia Homestead. And this is really cool because this is an area where you can actually build on. Not only that, but there's also an NPC raider who lives here, so you get yourself a free ally with this place. So let's go. To start off with, we're going to place our camp unit on this little jetty here. You can't actually place the camp in the water, unfortunately, but it does kind of teleport to the water anyway. But unfortunately, this place is covered with pre-placed rubbish. We're going to go and pick up hundreds of beer bottles, move all the boxes with our feet, or even use some explosive ordnance to get rid of all these boxes, because we can't actually place items if there's a box in the way. But once those are cleared out, we're going to place down some weaponed and other crafting benches down here. We've got lots of cool stashes glitched into the weapons benches. We're going to be showing how to do that later on in the video. And here we have a magnificent new cooking station. This is a cooking station made out of a minecart. It came out last week in the Atomic Store and I love it. It makes this lovely little boat kitchen look brilliant. And we also need some power, so I'm going to use this water mill, which I'm going to place in the river to give us some electricity. But the whole idea with this build is that I didn't really want anything on the exterior of the boat. I wanted it all self-contained on the vessel itself. But for the sake of power, and also just for the sake of the theme, I'm going to go and use that water generator, because I never used it before. We also have to glitch a lot of our kitchen items together, such as our refrigerator and our sink, just to get it to fit on the boat. That's the kind of stuff we're dealing with. Very tight tolerances here. And something which I saw on the Fallout 76 Reddit a while ago was someone who built a boat but used electrical wiring to make rope. And I thought, you know what, that's perfect here. I'm going to place down power conduits on the top masts and also at the base of the vessel in order to make what looks like rope. It's a really cool way to kind of hide your power conduits inside your base because they just naturally fit in the environment. It looks great. And then, of course, once everything was placed down in the main vessel, our kind of kitchen, living room, and workshop area is down. We can put some rugs down. But a very cool thing about this camp as well is that the boxes which we moved earlier, they actually come back after you log out of the server. So it means once you've got everything placed, you've actually got a load of free clutter to make the place look lived in. It's really cool. It looks like a real boat still with all these boxes and beer bottles everywhere. It looks great. And after we've built a little eating area, here's what we've got. We've got a fantastic workshop area with a really nice cooking barbecue here. This looks perfect. It really fits in with the boat. The color scheme works as well. It all kind of matches the overall aesthetic of the boat we have got. And in terms of saving space, we've done a fantastic job here. The only thing we don't have down here that I wanted to have here was our chemistry station. We're going to be placing that later. But this is a beautiful barbecue food preparation and also just workshop area that you can sit down with your friends and it looks so natural. I love it. Next up, we're going to build a tiny little sleeping area. Now, we only have this tiny little cabin inside which has a roof, so therefore we're going to utilize this. And we're going to do what we did in the last video where we kind of place a bedroll on top of pre-existing materials. But unfortunately, this is very difficult because we can't delete that safe. I didn't place that there. That was placed in the game already. So we're kind of got to build around all of this furniture, which we can't remove. It's very difficult, but we got it to work. And here's a cool glitch that I saw no respawns put on Twitter, which I've decided to nab. I believe he retweeted it from someone else. But you can actually fit the weapon racks perfectly on top of a lamplit poster. So you can have a really nice weapons display case there. It looks really good. And unfortunately with this room as well, we've got that issue to where when you try to place in certain areas, 
all of your items go to the top of the roof, which is obviously no good for us. So I can't do half of the stuff I wanted to do in here. I also wanted to put up like curtains to act like a makeshift door. We obviously can't snap doors to this thing because it isn't an actual wall. So unfortunately, we just got to be a little bit sparse with our bedroom area. But overall, I do think we make something nice. As you can see, the curtains glitch through and stuff. There's a bunch of issues with building our bedroom inside this cabin. But here's what we have got. We've got a really nice little sleeping area in here inside the kind of driver's cabin, which looks really good, it's very cosy, and we still managed to get our bed and stuff in there. And here we have a tribute to Galen. Galen was the cat which you can find in Fallout 4 and 76 paintings, who belonged to lead artist Nate Perkypile, who passed away recently. So that cat which we've been placing inside our camps for so many years, is now immortalized in the game. And I think it's really nice that we now know that. So thank you very much Galen, you've made us very happy. Now moving on to our upstairs area, where we're going to have like a little living room, but we're also going to cram our chems area in there, because it fits in perfectly, and I was really tight on space. One thing I am going to do is use power conduits to make kind of an upper rail system, and this upper rail system we can attach lights to, so it kind of gives us a little bit of decoration p potential, just by putting these pipes along the roof. It's a really nice way to get it done. And here you can see me glitching a fantastic shelving unit together. It's a really nice way to get lots of cool decoration is to use the earth moving glitch to put all these items up there. I have made a video on how to do that. You can go and check out the latest building glitches that will amaze your friends video to see how to do that. And also, of course, we're going to place down our sheep squatch boy. We finally got that dude and I absolutely love him. And here we go with our living room area done. We've got quite a nice little living space up here. We've got a really cool shelf which is fully stacked to actually show off all the cool items we have got and earned in the game. We've got a nice chemistry station and we have got a fantastic little place to sit down, read a magazine in the nice hot Appalachian sun. It's a really nice thing overall. And something which I really like about this area as well is that it does actually feel like it's got a bit of space left because we've pushed everything to the side. So actually it feels like we've got a lot more space than we actually do, which I think is essential for builds like this. And then of course we're just going to build a small little picnic area on the front of the boat because we just have a little bit more space which we need to utilize somehow. So we're going to do that with another little dining area because it looks good and you're fishing after all so you're going to be cooking up lots of grub aren't you. And here we are with our tiny boat camp done. Guys, I love this thing. This is so cute. It really blends in with the environment well, considering we're building on a pre-existing structure. And we've used lots of merging glitches and little camp glitches to cram everything together. It looks really good. I love the fact that we have got a raider who normally spawns it and also all the boxes which spawn in again. That essentially means we've got lots of extra decoration without trying, saving on budget and all that. I like our sleeping area, but it's a shame that we can only build in one half of the room. The other half, items just teleported to the roof. I have no idea why 76 does that, but it is what it is. And we've got a nice living room on the top, which has got some places to chill out with your friends. You can play the guitar, you can sit in the moonlight, and just really have a nice time inside your camp. We've got lots of pretty lights on our piping system in order to save space. And overall, I just think we've got a nice thing to show off some of the cool Atomic Shop items we've got. I really love the wiring we've got in here to act like ropes. It really does add to that kind of ship feel. I think it's really cool. And then we have a little dining area with some items glitched onto a little table there. Along with a nice little vending unit because it is nice to have vending machines inside your camp after all. So that's it people. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Remember to check out all the cool Patreon people in the description below who help support the channel with their financial donations. You just have a course can also do the same. We've got loads of cool Fallout 76 coming up soon and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye gang. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.